being with us. Um, again, uh, this is my second time to move right here. Um, so thank you for being uh, with us. So the last session is very, very um, attractive for me because um, it's totally, um, it's very honored to introduce the, and then speak with the entrepreneurs who are disrupting the banking industry, maybe? <laughs> disrupting, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but actually, the, it's very honor to me um, to, to, to speak with you guys, actually. So, uh, so let me introduce the uh, Sharesh first. So I saw your pitch uh, for the first time two years ago, maybe, in Tokyo, because you were uh, selected as a top the winner of the Southeast Asia region of the uh, Rising Expo or something. It's a, Rising Expo is a it's an annual startup conference organized by Cyber Asian Ventures in Tokyo, actually. So, um, yeah, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and what you do for those uh, people? Yes, yes, yeah. So, can you hear me at the back? No. Can you hear? Say something. Yeah, can you hear me at the back? Right. One more time, can you hear me at the back? Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Match Move. Uh, we um, actually probably disagree with almost everything the previous speaker said. Uh, we do not believe in win, win, win. Uh, I think banks are fooling themselves if they think that everyone's going to collaborate. Uh, I think that it's actually a weak excuse to say, you know, we should try and work together and win, win, win. Nobody's interested in that. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because banks themselves aren't interested in collaboration. Uh, right here in Singapore, any other country, banks are trying very hard to beat each other. Uh, in Singapore, for example, you have an ATM from one uh, group of banks. You can't use it on the other ATM network. So what makes them think that they can actually uh, collaborate uh, and win, win, win? It's not going to happen. Uh, the fact is that banks have failed completely to uh, really focus on the customer. Uh, banks have been so protective about their customers and trying to extract as many fees as possible, whether it's check payments or this or that. They completely missed the um, mobile revolution. They still congratulate themselves for having put uh, ATMs out there. Still can't get a decent web experience from most banks if you try and do web banking. And now they think they can do uh, a mobile banking. Uh, there's a very palpable set of fear amongst banks. Uh, they know that the fintechs are out to nail them. Um, and, uh, so, and so it should be. It's just competition. So pretending that, you know, we can work with uh, 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 fintechs and, you know, we're all going to have a nice time and let's collaborate, total crap. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a straight dog-eat-dog -dog world and I think the fintechs are coming and the banks need to be prepared. So with that introduction, uh, let me tell you, Matchmove Pay is the Singapore uh, headquartered company. Uh, we are now live across uh, seven countries. Oh, really? Across South. You started. So you started off in Jakarta, right? Is it? We started out in Singapore uh, in 2014, mm -hmm. and um, we are a B2B platform. Uh, so basically, what we're doing is stuff that banks can't do. Banks pretend they can do. Mm. Uh, and what we actually have done is taken a user view of the world. Banks talk about customers, customers, but they don't care about you unless you've got money and they can earn it from you. What we did was we started with the person holding the phone and said, what does this person want to do with their money? Mm. Not what the bank wants you to do, what the bank can execute for you. What do, what do you want to do with your money? And we figured out people want to do five things with their money. You want to store your money in a digital way. You want to spend, send, and lend. And then you want to invest. We focus on providing the three, spend, send, lend. Mm -hmm. We're saying that there are millions of people who want to be able to do this in their apps without ever having to open a bank account, without ever having to go to a remittance agency. So we've built that library, created a business model that allows us to grow across countries. Uh, we have offices in right across Southeast Asia, you know, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, India. We're growing very fast. We've just opened offices in Latin America, uh, headquartered in Miami. Mm -hmm. And basically, we are a B2B platform that says to you, if you want to create your own banking as a service inside an app without ever touching a bank, Matchmove can do it for you. 
So um, you're the basically targeting the emerging markets like um, uh, almost like Southeast Asian countries, but you're also targeting Southeast Asia, South American. I mean, the Latin America region maybe as well. Correct. Our business model is designed for uh, actually most countries, but it's getting a lot of uptake in countries where there's a high mobile penetration and very low card or payment penetration. Uh, you know, again, banks have taken like 50 years to uh, penetrate only 3% of the population. Only 3% of the population has a card. In India, it's 1%. What have the banks been doing all this time? We found a way to give you a card instantly into your phone that's ready to use. Mm. And that all comes out of uh, new technology. So yeah, we basically are doing stuff which banks have not been, ever mm -hmm. been able to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let me ask you detail about um, the, what you're doing actually after the, uh, Adrian's introduction. So yeah, Adrian, so what do you do? I know, what, what, what's your business? Would you like to introduce yourself? So, so I think uh, I concur with Shailas. Uh, so my name is Adrian Gunadi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Investry. We are Indonesia's leading peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. So I concur with Shailas. I was a banker for about 18 years. Uh, came out of the dark side uh, 2015 uh, because I see that, again, as I mentioned, uh, banks being banks, being highly regulated, uh, having legacy platform, legacy system, and not to mention the people with their obviously uh, uh, regulated views uh, have actually uh, limited access to SMEs, to consumers. And that was one of the reasons I started Investry 2015 because Indonesia has a problem. Um, it's the largest Southeast Asian economy, 250 million population. 59 million SMEs, uh, but if you look at the credit penetration uh, in Indonesia, only 14% SME credit to GDP, 14, that's one four. Um, there is a financing gap for SMEs about $60 billion that is unmet by 131 banks in the country. So there is a problem, and we believe that uh, Peer-to-peer -peer lending, alternative financing is a solution to that problem. And that's how the investory story started. Uh, 2015, we launched. Our focus is on SME. Um, there are challenges, obviously, in developing a peer-to-peer -peer lending because, obviously, Indonesia is one of the countries that doesn't have a credit bureau. So one of the challenges was how to develop a credit model, a credit scoring model for SMEs in a country without any credit scoring. So I think that's where the experience from banking comes. So myself and a group of bankers, we came out to start uh, the investory journey. Uh, we focused on SME uh, lending, basically using invoice. So we do invoice financing, receivable financing, which is a traditional bread and butter product. Uh, but it serves a solution for the SME in terms of cash flow. So. Investry, we connect between these SMEs who needs funds, cash flow, mm -hmm. uh, with lenders mm -hmm. uh, who are looking for attractive yields in Indonesia. Uh, there's only 1 million out of the 250 million population that has an account in the stock exchange. Mm. So, so can, can you clarify the, what you're doing as a, uh, as a kind of invest investment platform or lending platform? What's your, yeah. We're actually a peer-to-peer. -peer. So we are a marketplace. Rending, we connect. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we connect between the borrowers and the lenders. We don't take a position. We're not a balance sheet lender. What we do is we connect. So the pool of lenders can choose where they want to invest their money at mm -hmm. obviously attractive returns. Um, we verify, we analyze, we score the credit to give uh, the credit profile of the borrowers. And by then, obviously, these lenders can participate at a minimum of $100 to lend to these SMEs. We do the facilitation, mm. we do the collection, we do the monitoring, and we focus on short term. Our average tenor is about 59 days uh, for the loan. Mm -hmm. The average yield is 17.6% per mm. annum. Uh, we facilitated close to about $15 million uh, to date, less than a year, with uh, zero default. Mm. So uh, you mentioned that 
it's a P2P, P2P platform to connecting the renderers, renderers and the borrowers maybe. So, so, so when we look at the borrowers side, they are probably the owner of SME or startups or those kind of guys maybe, right? So, uh, looking at the render, who are they? Um, who the, yeah, render the money for? The lenders, 95% um, of our lenders are actually retail lenders. These are individuals. Demographically, 52% are aged between 20 and 35 year olds. We see that these millennials, who comprise about 50% of Indonesia's population, they don't want to bother going to a bank. They don't want to bother waiting in line, filling out forms for investment products, meeting people. So they are doing their own investment. They are being their own fund manager. They diversify the risk. So this is part of the education that we're uh, doing, and we feel that you know, uh, having a digitally accessible means of investing is a great way to educate the millennials, the next generation, on how to invest and where to invest to diversify their portfolio. Mm. So they typically get benefit um, um, by the, the borrowing the money from you guys uh, rather than uh, doing so from the typical commercial um, financial institution or yes. uh, banks or those kind of guys. Maybe. I, think, I think where we're different is speed. Um, the average uh, processing time for a bank. Uh, it's a credibility scoring system kind of things you have, right? It's, a, it's like an artificial intelligence based yes. Uh, yes. kind of. Yes, um, so that's why the speed uh, we are able to process and disperse in three days, whereas a bank in Indonesia it takes 21 business days. So one of the challenging things in terms of running a, a financial service over here in Southeast Asia is uh, probably um, people have no uh, credit history yes. because they have no uh, history in terms of the uh, um, uh, borrowing money from banks or something like that. So how did you how did you make that kind of things or? So we use a combination between traditional scoring variables and alternative scoring variables. So we use social media data. We use historical data because we partner with uh, e-commerce uh, platforms. Let's say like the Lazada, let's say like Tokopedia, which is big in Indonesia. Uh -huh. They have alternative data there. You can take out the data, how much sales they've generated, uh -huh. production, facilities, payments. So these data we compile with traditional regular banking data mm -hmm. to build a comprehensive model on the credit profile. Uh -huh. So when we look at the uh, dem typical uh, demographics or typical clients of your guys actually, they are probably more like um, online retailers or those kind of guys rather than, uh, how they say, offline. 20% yes. um, is online, the rest 80% are traditional SMEs actually, uh, who are now being accessible and we all the, all the loan process is done online through our platform, so they are accessing it online, uh, which makes it much easier rather mm -hmm. than going to a bank. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. So um, going back to Shalesh, so um, you are, I think in my understanding, you are trying to replace the conventional uh, or changing the typical type of the credit card um, form and kind of thing. So, so is it um, you are disrupting the conventional business model by credit card companies or uh, you want to cooperate or collaborating with the uh, banks or credit company? What do you do? So um, we might be called uh, disruptors, but um, all we're doing is just filling a need that uh, banks have never been able to fill. Um, and this need has become much bigger because there are more people holding a phone. So the fact that, I mean, if you think those of you who are as old as I am will remember that, you know, many of us were trapped by a bank. We hated the service. It was crappy, uh, you know, in the branches and you swore like crazy, and, but it was too, we were held hostage because we couldn't change the bank account. And some banks were good, some weren't, but depending on how much money you put in, suddenly the service got better and better. Now, what's happened is that the needs of the people haven't changed. People still need to do things like um, uh, pay for things quickly, pay for, get loans fast, um, send money to others easily. That need is not new. What is new is that there is now a possible technology solution to solve it. So all we're doing is filling a gap which uh, we don't believe banks, uh, and again, let me not say all banks. Uh, we work with banks and some of our, some banks are our customers. There are some outstanding banks. Um, 
um, you know, like Santander in Europe, uh, like uh, Citibank. Um, uh, there's uh, TP Bank in Vietnam. Uh, there's players like uh, BRI in Indonesia. They don't pretend to do innovation, you know, all that kind of uh, noisy stuff with pictures of their CEO to say that's that's not uh, innovation, you know. They haven't been able to innovate. They think now they're running an accelerator, so we're innovating. Waste of money, waste of shareholder money. And I actually remove my money from any bank that has an innovation center because I know it's a complete waste. Now, coming back to the question, what are we doing? We're not disrupting. We're just filling a gap. The banks feel it's disrupting because they feel, no, those are our customers. We should be doing that. But they can't get their act together. So we're coming in. But we always still need a bank. So we work with the major banks in India, Yes Bank, RBL, you know, TP Bank in Vietnam, BPI. But what we're helping them do, because they get it, is that they need to accelerate faster. They need the right technology. They need the right view. They need to be able to execute much faster. On average, banks spend about 80% of their IT budget maintaining legacy systems. You can never go to a banking presentation without them going on about regulators, you know, and this and that. They're so stuck on their old technologies and they keep trying to talk about innovation. All we're doing is we're much more nimble, we're faster, we figured out a business model where banks can play a role, but at the back. Uh, I think sometimes I actually feel bad for the banks because we expect too much of them, and that's because they're the only ones standing there. The other guys who made a complete mess of it are telcos. You know, telcos have tried to do digital banking. There's one or two success stories around the world, but by and large, they screwed it up completely. So we, I wouldn't say we're disruptors. There was nothing to disrupt. The banks weren't doing it. If we were actually coming in and doing what banks were doing and doing it better or differently, it's one thing. We are just completely filling a space that didn't exist. So, so really correct, but your um, main user base are uh, individual uh, consumers, maybe, right? Rather than... Uh, we, are, we are B2B to C. B2B to C. So your direct client is... Uh, Will be an enterprise. Uh -huh. uh, so our customers include airlines, e-commerce stores, banks, mm. um, uh, large corporations that want to do payments to uh, staff, like one oil company that has 40,000 drivers in mm. Asia, needs to disperse payments quickly. They don't want to send it into bank accounts, they want to put it straight into a wallet with a card. Uh, a number of our customers are uh, MVNOs, they sell um, low cost calling mm. uh, to overseas. These same people typically need to send remittance as well overseas. They use our APIs to transfer money that can be collected as cash on the other side. Mm -hmm. So we're a B2B to C, and we go with uh, organizations that have a large user base, but that user base is dissatisfied mm -hmm. or has unmet needs in terms of spend, send, and let. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So going back to Adrian, so uh, I would ask you actually, so your main market is um, uh, in terms of geographical market, I mean, uh, so you're basically targeting only in Indonesia or some other nations in Southeast Asia or? Yeah, so basically our main focus for the next year and a half would still be Indonesia given its size and potential market. We're actually uh, rolling out in other uh, tier one cities, we call it in Indonesia, outside of Jakarta uh, as we speak. Uh, but we're also talking to uh, partners in regionally. Uh, Vietnam is uh, one, one uh, partner we're talking to. Uh, so perhaps we're looking at other footprints uh, sooner rather than later in Southeast Asia. Uh, one of the beauty actually uh, for the peer-to-peer -peer lending in Indonesia is that we help uh, define the regulation uh, with the regulators. And so uh, it is a regulated industry for better or for worse. Mm. Uh, we believe that regulation allows us to attract and partners with uh, institution uh, to attract institutional funding, uh, not only from Indonesia, but outside of Indonesia. So we are able to attract foreign funds to lend to <coughs> Indonesian SMEs. Mm -hmm. uh, Japanese funds is one uh -huh. of them. Uh, obviously, with the negative interest rate in Japan, you have an access mm -hmm. at 17, 10% returns. Mm -hmm. So we become, you know, sort of like a, a platform for foreign investments mm -hmm. into SMEs in Indonesia. So we are looking also at regional footprint, uh, both on the lender side, as well as uh, licensing with other local partners there to provide, you know, our peer-to-peer -peer solution. Mm -hmm. So um, your campaign raised money. Uh, it's probably Series A funding last year, right? Is it? 
It's from the uh, who the name of that? Uh, Jonah. Kajora Avengers. Uh, Kajora Avengers. Is, is it is it is it famous guy in, in Sebastian? Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, so they, they, they are uh, good at the uh, kind of the innovation, the fintech startups or something. Uh, I've not never heard of them, so, so I'm asking you that. Uh, I mean, the, the Kujones Ventures, right? Is it? What's the name of that? What's the name of the bench, uh, the VC firm actually? Kajora, a, Kajora Ventures. Kajora Ventures, sorry. Yeah. So, so they are very much focusing on the investing the fintech startup in Indonesia, right? Is it? Yes, no? that's right. We have uh, they have three, four uh, fintech portfolios: uh, market aggregator, uh -huh. uh, POS uh, platform, peer-to-peer mm -hmm. lending ourselves, and also they have invested in um, wallet uh, provider in mm -hmm. Indonesia. So. Uh, several fintech uh, portfolios and what we do is obviously we can collaborate with them mm. uh, with the POS obviously you have data for merchants uh, with uh, market aggregator we become a distribution channel mm. uh, as, as, as a means to further access and penetrate mm. so I think creating this ecosystem among startups oh. fintech startups is uh, one of the trend that we are looking at also mm -hmm. uh, within Indonesia itself so from the startup's perspective or entrepreneur's perspective, uh, VC firms or uh, such as, um, I, I can't remember the name of them, but actually VC firms are typically helpful for uh, startups rather than banks or other financial institutions in terms of uh, growing up their, your business or what do you think? Um, is, it, is it banks or VC, VC firms are more helpful for you guys? in terms of the growing up your business, maybe? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think for us, uh, it depends. Because uh, in Indonesia, just to share with you, uh, Mandiri, which is the biggest bank in Indonesia, have set up their own VC f uh, platform. So they have Mandiri Capital. Uh, their goal is obviously to look at investments mm. uh, that they can invest in, but then uh, use the technology or use the service to support their banking requirements. Now, uh -huh. what that happens, when that happens, is that the startups will always be, be exclusive for Mandiri mm. or for the big banks, mm -hmm. which obviously as an entrepreneur, I'd like to open up, you know, uh, as a tech company, you want to become uh, multi-agnostic. Mm -hmm. We look at partners, not only with one bank, we're, part we're looking at partnership with several banks. So I think for us, uh, obviously it depends on the founders, but for, but for industry, we're, uh, we think that, that we see Funding is still is still the way to go uh, mm. in terms of uh, leveraging the technology, leveraging the network partnership, and I think it be you become multi-agnostic and you can partner with several financial institutions, not only banks, insurance. So there's a lot of angle that we can look at. Mm. Okay, great. So I think I've seen uh, several fintech startups uh, in Indonesia, and then some of them are. Uh, um, doing the, the things like um, it's it's like um, it's something like a financial inclusion, which is targeting the uh, how do you say the grabbing potential clients from or users from the uh, unbunkered. Yes. So 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 I think the uh, there are several several competitors in the Indonesian market as well. So so what is your advantage? What 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 is your um um, um the best at uh, doing that? in the business actually. Yes, I think uh, other competitors, because as I mentioned, the, the pie is so huge in Indonesia. You have 50 million SMEs, you have 250 million individuals. So even within the SME, there's several layers of SME. There's the smaller micro SMEs, there's a middle, there's an upper SME. So I think every uh, competitor or every player is looking at certain markets. Uh, we focus more on the medium SME, why? Because the size is more attractive. Uh, secondly, uh, operate, operational cost is relatively more efficient than going for the smaller ticket size. Uh, so we feel that uh, we are targeting the right market uh, given obviously the potential opportunities. But why, where we're different is obviously experience. Uh, we come from ex with, with banking background. We know how credit is done in Indonesia. We know where the risks are. We know how to mitigate those risks. Uh, secondly, obviously, uh, scale, uh, how do we scale up? I think that's given our leveraging on our network, on our experience, also is an important factor on how to scale the business. And that's why we've been able to grow the portfolio 30% month on month, uh, which is slightly 
higher compared to our competitors. So focusing on the SME market, building scale, uh, leveraging on partnership, because I know that foreign competition will come in to Indonesia. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the Chinese are already looking into Indonesia. Uh, so that gives us a good first mover advantage into this, this market. Mm. So that when competition come in, then obviously they will be looking at who's the biggest player there. Mm. So um, I'm not sure if you can disclose or not, but um, um, what is your exit strategy in your mind for now? Um, because many um, startups, basically the fintech startup, a payment startup in South East regions are. Masar. Yeah. Uh, the organizers just reached out saying that they need to wrap up the stuff now because for the like packaging rest of the stuff. <laughs> so I'll need your help to like you know, take, take your yeah. last question. So the question can apply to both, I think. Eh? Yeah. So the question again, please. Uh, so um, uh, who would you ask? Wait, 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 what's that? Actually, the um, yeah, actually the many uh, fintech startup, or payment startup, were being listen, listen being acquired by the big guys like Alibaba or Ant Financial, those kind of guys. So, so, do you have any specific um, exit strategy in your mind for now? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> um, at this point, we, we have had three or four um, uh, offers to buy out in the last uh, two years. Uh, one is a very large uh, telco from Europe. Uh, one is a large fina U.S. financial institution. Uh, but we've decided that it's too early. We've got a long way to go. Uh, maybe when we cross a billion dollar valuation, we'll consider it, but nothing in that plan right now. Okay, so there's no time remaining, maybe, right? Uh, I, go ahead, sir. Sorry. So, rest, rest down, very uh, tough question uh, for you. I, I think it's more or less the same. Uh, <laughs> it's still early stage. Again, as I mentioned, there's uh, 60 billion unmet credit demand in Indonesia itself, $60 billion, basically. And we're just scratching the surface. So I think there's a lot of room for growth, uh, not only in Indonesia, but also regionally in terms of providing access to credit to SMEs. Mm. So I think that's, that's the story. And we focus on, on expanding, scaling, and obviously being a dominant player in the market. So very lastly, let me ask the, the one question for each of you, actually. So what the, you're looking for right now? I'm most. Um, um, uh, you're, you're looking for uh, talent, so you're looking for money, or what, what do you want most right now? Raising or hiring, anything? What do you do? <laughs> what, we're, what we're looking at is actually talent. Um, so just to share with you, a lot of bankers are now moving to our platform. I've got a UBS guy who left UBS Investment Bank to join. FinTech basically. Uh, yeah. So we see a lot of people, uh, we see a lot of talent coming out from the banking space, which is good for the industry. Uh, and I think, you know, once the talent is there, the growth is there, regulation is there, I think the funding will come by itself mm. because they see that the market is uh, attractive enough for funds to come in. So I think. In Indonesia itself, I'm speaking on behalf of, uh, because I'm also the vice chairman of the Indonesian FinTech oh. Association, mm -hmm. we see that a lot of invest investors, uh, VCs, are looking more and more into the FinTech space compared to the e-commerce in Indonesia now. Because e-commerce, uh, transportation, you have the big giants, Gojek, mm -hmm. Tokopedia, Traveloka, but FinTech is very much, uh, it's a blue Excellent. ocean. Mm -hmm. So I think we will see a lot of investments mm -hmm. in that. And that's why I mentioned, the funds will come by itself. Sure, so last part from you. Okay, so, uh, you know, like any growth company, uh, top of mind always, you're looking for talent, you're looking for funding, you're looking for new customers, partners, all of that's the same. We've got to a point where, fortunately, some of the things like talent is building its own momentum. So we are hiring people from uh, Google, um, people from PayPal, etc. So uh, from two years ago, where it was very difficult to get talent, now it's coming through the door. Lots of other fintech senior people are applying to us for, for jobs. So it's never easy, but it's getting easier. Fundraising also, we've got to a point where you know we've got the momentum, we've got a lot of interest. It's still important. Uh, but if there's one thing that I uh, really wish I had more of, uh, and that's time. There's just not enough time to execute as fast as we want to. Thank you very much. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much.